Hi everyone, welcome to another comics-loving, exciting edition of Words, Images, and Worlds. On this episode, I am delighted to be talking with Legendary, can I say Legendary? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, uh, well, well, comics creator John Rose. Right. John, mm -hmm. may I call you John? Is that okay? Sure. Oh, definitely. Yep. Great, great. Well, uh, thank you, John, for jumping in, for talking comics with me for just a few minutes on this lovely Sunday. And yeah. I understand we have some regional connections as well. We've both yeah, been we sure to do. the Lewisburg, uh, West Virginia State Fair, I believe. It's, it's... That's that's correct. Yeah. We sure have. Yeah. And I yeah. thank you very much for inviting me and for having me on today. Delighted to have you. Delighted. Uh, you've worked in comics for some time. And as you know, as someone who's listened to the show, you know that I talk about comics a good bit. So I'm curious right. about your connection to comics and what has made this kind of the, the ideal space for your creating. Um, really, all I've ever wanted to be is a cartoonist. I mean, I grew up... Uh, reading the comics. I have distinct memories of spreading the comics out on my grandmother's uh, living room floor, just laying on my stomach and reading the comics. I've, I've really never wanted to be anything but a cartoonist. So um, actually maybe, so my, my grandmother lived in, in a small town. We, we lived there too at the time in Covington, Virginia. And mm -hmm. um, her house uh, was one block from the corner newsstand where you could buy comic books of all kinds like two blocks from the drugstore where you could also buy comic books and then about two blocks the other way uh to the library um so you could uh check out any book you wanted on comics and cartoons and how to create cartoons so um if anything i feel like i was just almost born into it yeah yeah i love that love that, that the long-standing <laughs> interaction with comics right uh, absolutely yeah. Yeah. Uh, so over your shoulder right there is a character and I don't oh, know right. if you know that he's back there, but he's back yeah. there watching us right <laughs> now. Right. Yeah. And that is the character of Snuffy Smith, which, which goes back to my right. youth, most definitely. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, how right. did your, your longstanding relationship with this character begin? Um, well, actually as a kid, I do remember reading Snuffy Smith and I always enjoyed it. And I, uh, when I was young and I read it, I probably, I love the artwork, but I didn't always understand stand the comic, of course. But uh, so that the way I came to work on the comic strip was uh, I'm a member of the National Cartoonist Society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have been <clears throat> I have been for many years. And back in it was like 1997 or 1998, we had a cartoonist meeting. And at that meeting, I was talking to a fellow cartoonist who was I was doing editorial cartoons at the time and. And he was, too. And he told me that he was working as an assistant on the Blondie comic strip, in addition to uh, being an editorial cartoonist. And I guess I never really knew or put together that uh, cartoonists, comic strip cartoonists used assistants. And uh, on the drive home from the convention that that weekend, I kind of talked to my wife about it. And I thought, you know, maybe this is something I could I could just try as a as a way to, to get into comic strips, because I done newspaper illustration newspaper editorial cartoons sports cartoons for newspapers but i really always wanted to be a uh, comic strip cartoonist mm. and so when i came home the first comic strip i thought about was uh snuffy smith and i had grown up reading it and uh it was my grandfather's favorite comic strip and I didn't know Fred Laswell, but because I was in the National Cartoon Society, um, I did have access to his address. Um, and what I did when I came home, I just uh, worked up some samples. I did a sample Sunday uh, Sunday page along with some character sketches. And I sent that along with some of my other work that I'd done over the years uh, to Fred. And I mean, Fred was was huge. He was a, mm -hmm. a legend in our business. Um, very popular, uh, very well liked. Um, he had such a great personality. Um, and really as a cartoonist, I'm sure many cartoonists have told you, you know, you, you get a lot of rejection. You send a lot of things out. You either get a rejection or sometimes you never hear back, uh, from, you know, where you send the, the information to. And I really didn't know if I'd hear back from Fred. 
And about two weeks later, from when I mailed him this package, um, I was eating lunch. Uh, it was a uh, Saturday. I was actually uh, eating a nutritious lunch of Cocoa Puffs. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the phone rang. And I answered the phone. And the voice on the other end said, John, this is Fred Laswell. I kind of like choke on my Cocoa Puffs. Um <laughs> And he says, I got the packet of samples that you sent me, and I really like the way you draw big noses. I mean, that's that's word for word uh, what he said. Mm -hmm. um, it ended up that from that point, um, he uh, uh, asked for more illustrations. Uh, I sent a few more strips and samples, and he ended up hiring me as his inking assistant. And so uh, we worked together for about three and a half years. He was an older gentleman. Um, but he was very into technology. He lived in Tampa, Florida, and I lived uh, in Virginia. And um, I went down to see him over the three and a half years we worked together. I probably went down about three times for long visits, but we mm -hmm. talked on the phone, we emailed, we faxed every day. Um, and essentially, he would sketch out the comic strip, write the comic strip. Um, and then um, he had a beautiful drawing style. He would uh, fax it to me and then I would look at the fax. Then I would um, then on like Bristol board and a light table, I would ink, uh, ink the comic strip. I would uh, ink the comic strip. And then uh, he had a computer font. And this was back in 1998. So he was probably one of the first people to have a computer font, a cartoonist, mm -hmm. I would assume. Mm -hmm. um, but he had his own font. I would put that on there, um, scan it in the computer, clean it up, and then send it to him uh, for his, his approval. And like I said, he was a great guy. If he um, if he liked what I did, he would say something like, "It's fine as a frog's hair." You know, oh, this is fine <laughs> as a frog's hair. Um, if he didn't like it, he would say, um, "You know." Uh, are you, have you been looking out the window? Stop looking out the window and get back to work. You know, or he'd write that on a fax and send it back. Or, you know, there were times maybe I made a character's nose too big, I inked it too big. Or um, I remember the socks that Snuffy wore. Sometimes I made the stripes too thick, things like that. And, you know, he's just things that maybe nobody else would notice, but he could notice it. And he was trying to make sure that I could notice it. And, uh, um, anyway, he was a wonderful man and, and a great teacher to work for. Um, and uh, then when uh, when Fred passed away in 2001, um, Jay Kennedy, uh, uh, the editor at, at King Features, um, offered me a tryout for the comic strip. And I, I, uh, I did a bunch of samples and uh, sent them to him and unbeknownst to me they also had a few other people that were um, sending in samples and I guess with the week I remember I drew them all and then we were leaving for a vacation our, our family vacation to Myrtle Beach uh, South Carolina mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. when I submitted all of them to Jay he said you know give me a call back next week and I will uh, let you know what I've decided and this was long before I ever had a cell phone so I just remember every day, everywhere we went at Myrtle Beach, I was running around to pay phones to <laughs> call Jay Kennedy and uh, um, I'd get him or he hadn't made a decision or I couldn't get him. And then uh, it ended up finally near the end of the week that um, he uh, let me know that they were going to hire me to to be the cartoonist. And uh, nice. it's really been, yeah, I mean, that's a long story, I know, but it's it's been the greatest joy of probably my professional career to get to draw this uh, comic strip every day and, and carry on um, being trusted by King features to carry on such a, a legacy for, you know, this generation and, and generations to come, hopefully. Yeah. No. When you mention, of course, one of the themes that comes up on here with comics creators and particularly mm -hmm. the comic strip a good bit, which is the fact that it is how often <laughs> every day, <laughs> Every day, <laughs> every right. day. That's yeah. right. Any uh -huh. any secrets to that sort of uh, longevity and kind of continue creating? No, it's, I mean, it's just a daily deadline. 
every day and um you know you can get ahead by doing a week's worth to go on vacation but then it seems like you're two weeks behind by the time you come back <laughs> um but yeah it's just you know you just have to do it and you have to love doing it and and mm -hmm. i do i mean i really feel uh you know really blessed to get to do this comic strip every day because like i said it's all i've ever wanted to do so um yeah you, you you just have to love it and i guess all my working life i've pretty much always been in newspapers or comics so i'm just used to a, a deadline yeah yeah absolutely and um wonderful to be part of such a, a seminal character and uh something that's been around for a while uh, i'm yeah. sure yeah yeah it is it's it's a blessing so it really is yeah. Any particular, as you look back across the career, any particular moments that have been kind of some of the most rewarding, positive interactions with readers, um, kind of surprising moments as you've worked on the character, any anything like that that you'd like to mention? Um, I think there's had uh, lots of lots of wonderful interactions with readers, um, probably a really special thing was um it was well a couple of things uh it, both are are sad situations but it um getting to work on the projects were very rewarding um the first was the 10th anniversary of 9 11 mm -hmm. uh many many comic strip cartoonists or i think almost all of us were asked to create uh special comic strips on the 10th anniversary not in a humorous way, but, you know, kind of paying tribute to the, of course, to, to the victims of, of 9-11. Mm -hmm. And um, my strip from that day, um, it ended up, uh, I drew one that it was a special strip. I really enjoyed getting to draw it. And then what they did, the comics ran in the newspaper that day, got lots of reaction, lots of uh, coverage from, uh, I think, Associated Press and, and the news. Um, and then the originals uh, were sent to museums all around the country to hang in museums for two weeks. Um, and actually, I, I went up with my oldest daughter to uh, New York. Mom was hanging in a museum in New York City. So we went up there to see that. And just just the reaction from readers and, and just everyone was was so great to, to all those comics. So it was it was just a very rewarding to be part of that uh, that day in the comic pages. And then the second thing will be um, uh, again, it was a this was a tragedy too in um, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, a few years ago. Pigeon Forge, Eastern Tennessee, that area, mm -hmm. um, they had really bad wildfires. I it was around that. December, and sometime in December, and. I vacationed there a lot, really liked the area a lot. Um, and um, I, I knew the editor at the time of the Knoxville News Sentinel. And um, it just kind of hit me that Snuffy has a lot of fans in, in Tennessee. And I wonder if I could do something, maybe something about wild, wildfire prevention or something um, mm -hmm. with Snuffy. And I talked to the editor down there. And then so we partnered with with that editor. Um, his name was Jack McElroy and um, and King Features and, and myself. And I created um, this set of wildfire prevention ads, um, public service ads. There was about six or eight of them. I think it was about six of them. Um, each one featured Snuffy and, and family, the, the characters, um, kind of in a... Um, a humorous situation but then they wrote like some good they wrote tips alongside it so it was kind of like a, a wildfire prevention tips how to prevent creating wildfires um the series was called um snuff out snuff out wildfires before they start mm -hmm. and uh they ended up running those in uh in the knoxville news sentinel and then the tennessee press association picked them up and they ran uh throughout newspapers in in tennessee um, they ended up actually winning an, a, like a first place award in the Tennessee from the Tennessee Press Association. But just to be able to, uh, I don't know, I guess it kind of hurt me when I heard about what was happening to, you know, an area that I really loved and just to be able to uh, uh, 
uh, get behind it and, and make a, uh, I didn't make a difference, but I felt like I, you know, uh, contributed maybe to some, a little help with the recovery. And um, so it was, it was rewarding to get to use Snuffy and the characters in that way too. Yeah, but those yeah. are just two kind of highlights like that. And I, I would say art definitely makes a difference. And mm-hmm. just knowing that somebody's out there that, that advocates that kind of, you know, cares about the area, cares about things right. that are happening. That's, that's right. a big deal to people. Yeah. And it, it can, art can kind of be healing, you know, mm-hmm. at times. So hopefully in both those cases, maybe it helped heal a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I know that last week you had another book drop. I know you've been rather prolific as a daily strip would <laughs> uh, lead to. And so curious about the the items on your agenda that currently have your creative attention, anything that you'd like to mention about the new book and then places where people can connect with you. Let me see. I've got it. Um, the, uh, the new book is. The new book is is called uh, Barney Google and Snuffy Smith uh, Turn a Hundred. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's just kind of a sample. It's of quite a birthday. Cover, <laughs> yeah. So basically, it's a digital uh, digital book collection from um, our comic strips in 2019, which was the hundredth birthday of Barney Google, mm-hmm. um, and it features. Uh, I did a special storyline for about two and a half weeks about Barney Google. Um, A lot of people ask what happened to Barney, whatever happened to Barney Google. And um, I kind of brought him back in 2013. And then over the years, I brought him back a little bit more, but a little more each year. But um, so I had him that year get lost in the comic pages. And um, as he was trying to find Hoot and Holler, so he got lost in uh, Blondie and uh, Mother Goose and Grimm and um, Curtis and just all kinds of different comics. So it was a lot of fun to get to create that storyline. And and so that that whole storyline is in this book with all the comic crossovers and um, and and some commentary also by me. I did some uh, special illustrations to go along with it as well. And then every every sunday comic strip is in the book uh chronologically for the for the year t- uh, 2019 as well so it was nice. this is my first first foray into digital book publishing and um so we just thought we'd give it a try and um i really i was pleased with the way it came out i think the color really uh looks nice and um uh so we'll see how it does but i i enjoyed it yeah, so I hope I hope our readers will like it too. Yeah. But it's on uh it's for sale on Comics Kingdom, comicskingdom.com, which is where you can also read um Snuffy Smith, uh Barney Google and Snuffy Smith each day. Nice, nice. I'll be sure and link that. And I imagine digital publishing has a really nice sort of accessibility for people too. Um so yeah, I imagine I think, that's rewarding too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was pretty pretty neat i'm i'm an old guy and i have you know i like books in my hands and you know feel the paper and stuff but it's pretty neat to download it to my phone as soon as i got a copy and um you know just start reading it that way so yeah that was that was pretty fun and i think it'll look good on a tablet and Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah yeah well john have we missed anything in the talk through that you want to make sure to share as part of the episode before we close out um let me see i think at one point you asked, you're going to, I think you asked me about, um, about how comics are different as far as mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. storytelling. And, and uh, I thought about that some, and I was thinking, um, I feel like we're more, I guess what makes us different in my opinion is um, that we're visual storytellers where the pictures are really important in the, in the storytelling itself. And um in my comic strip, especially, I if you notice each day, I usually just have about uh, two panels that I have to tell a story in. Or um, and in a Sunday comic strip, I, I really love getting to stretch out and and get into ten or however many panels I, I can put a make into a Sunday comic strip. But still, I try to 
um, make the bulk of the art uh, do the storytelling because, um, you know, I, I feel like that's how comics are different. And, and I remember when I when I worked for Fred, he said um, it was important to, to keep everything simple, like not uh, fill it up with too much dialogue, because in today's world, we just had and this was in the 90s. Um, you know, we just had a few seconds with each reader. Mm -hmm. Um so I uh, and also because um, Snuffy is in a lot of newspapers and online clients around the world. So we're in a lot of different languages. So if you can, I feel like if I use more uh, artwork to tell the story, sometimes that helps with uh, translation and and things, too, um, which that's something kind of neat. We get to do every year, for example, um, in the country of Norway, mm -hmm. we do a comic, a comic book digest every oh, year cool. um, mm -hmm. with uh, Papa and Hager and Snuffy and mm -hmm. so like here's let's see for example that's a that's a Sunday you kind of you can't uh, it's known as Snuff Day or I don't know how you pronounce it but, um, it's neat to see it in lots of different languages and need to be a, a part of a comic book even if it is in, in Norway it's you know, versus America, it'd be cool to have it here too. But um, nah, that's a long answer to that question. But <laughs> no, no, it's a great answer. Great answer. And I'm always <laughs> glad to see the the examples, the art, and uh, mm -hmm. really interesting what gets published around the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those come out every year um, in November, and they're uh, really popular gifts around Christmas time. And then we'll we'll do it again. We're doing it again for this year. So um, it's. I think every year that I've been since I've been working on the comic, they've done it. So it's it's a real neat thing to be be part of. Very cool. Very cool. Um, and, and you're absolutely right about the power of the visual visual across languages. I, I love that aspect of it as well. Well, thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, well, John, thank you for a, a great talk. Glad to have you back. Anytime. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. I enjoy your podcast. And well, thank um, you. I just like to, I think I, I use the word bodacious a lot in the <laughs> comic strip. And I'll just say, I feel like I'm bodaciously blessed to get to do this comic strip. And I thank King features. I think I thank people that read the comic strip. I thank the papers and clients that carry it. And I thank, you know, folks like you that want to talk to me about it. And I'm very appreciative and I thank you very much. Absolutely. My pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, glad to share about the work and glad to speak with you as well. And glad to have you back anytime. Well, thank you, Jason. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, with that, I will say thank you again. And I'll mm -hmm. be sure to share this out on audio, video and all the things. OK, thank you.